What are some of your experiences that you have out there? Well, you know, going to, could be a restaurant, could be at a hospital, could be at any institution that offers any kind of service. What was the experience you had? Please tell us on that hashtag, which is why in the morning. But we had asked you an amazing question on our social media platforms regarding uh, business as well. And in Ilik Sumbosana, in your first business idea, now as a pian advice, Ganiko to Ngini, trying to start a business as well. So I'd also love to hear from our guest who is live with us in studio, and that is Mr. Kelvin Gitonga. He is the operations manager at Big Square. Karibu sana, Kevin. Asante sana. Uh -huh. How are you feeling this morning? Nasikia El Nino inakuja ile mbaya sana. Are you, are you ready? <laughs> uh, El Nino kweli inakuja. Jisa kuna statement ilipeano jana. <laughs> it's, it's coming. Above average. It's coming. Yeah. But anyways, it's still heavy rains. Because uh, I remember the update they said it's going to go from... Uh, this place is Kutanyashadi early January. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it means it, there's been a, there'll be, it will be a lot of raining in between. I said I'll be doing it to one or two. Yeah, but you know, with global, with global Kenya, warming, it changes. <laughs> in Kenya, anything is possible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, away from that, uh, just tell us a little bit of what you do and why you're here. Um, just like you said, uh, my name is Kelvin Gitonga, the operations manager at Big Square. Right. Um, just actually celebrated two days ago, uh, 10 years in the industry. Mm -hmm. So um, joined as an intern when I was still a teenager right. um, back in 2013. So uh -huh. it, it's been quite a journey. Right. But uh, full of experiences, full of lessons, full of um, uh, low moments because not everything is perfect. Right. You get to learn different aspects in terms of the hospitality industry, the restaurant industry. Yeah. Because actually, initially I wanted to, be, when I was still in high school, I wanted to be, a, to be an engineer. And but what, uh, your, what your happened? Drop. <laughs> dreams. I said dreams are valid. What happened to yours? <laughs> no, I think I, I, I did internship at one of the construction sites. Ah. Then after that, uh, Nili Sema, hey, this is not for me. Yeah, this is not for me. So yeah. I just uh, now went back, I just now did the passion um, that I was, because actually I wanted to become an engineer because of my dad as well. Oh, your dad is an engineer. Yes, yeah, so now yeah. I just didn't want, after that, Nili Sema, too, what I kai. Mm. Yeah. But dreams are still valid. You can always go back anytime. No. Any I don't think I've ever loved math. That's right. been one of the one of the things. One oh, of the reasons uh, why. Now I see. Now I see. Now yes. I see. But yeah. uh, talk talk about Big Square and mm. uh, w uh, this week also being customer service week. Yes. It's all about you know matters food and mm. also customers experiencing what you do at yes. uh, Big Square. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit of what happens in there and what products are you guys you know giving to customers out there now that it's customer service week. Um, we currently are uh, having uh, a weekly offer. So like today, you can enjoy uh, discounted pizzas on, on the large pizzas actually alone. Uh -huh. So Big Square, uh, so Pizza Mojo is actually part of Big Square. Uh -huh. So that's oh, Pizza, those, pizza Mojo. Mojo. Oh, yes. Okay. It's actually part of Big Square. So those, those, that, those are, that's pretty much the same brand. Just right. that uh, Pizza Mojo is under Big Square anyway. Right. Yes. So what happens there? Because, uh, <laughs> you know, somebody told me pizza did not originate from Africa. It, of course it, it didn't. It came from <laughs> Italy or Japan. Yeah, Italy. Italy. Yeah. So how did it, your story live in Africa? <laughs> and now it's a big business. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, it's a big I think uh, Kenyans are now accust are getting accustomed to the pizza. But, you know, just, uh, the actual pizza that people should eat is on a thin crust. Right. And that's the actual Italian. Oh, the thin crust. Ile, ile ile Italian, ile. Uh, yo, the Italian Oh, me pizza. I thought the fat one is no, 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 no. with a lot of cheese uh, and, you know. A good pizza in Italy, thin crust. Ile slim one. Yeah. Uh, wow. I can just ask you, I can open up Shiba, so it's not a thick crust. Oh, wow. Uh, so it means <laughs> like there's varieties and different types of recipes. Yeah, in diff in the, yeah there's a, there's a, there are different recipes. And even uh, the ones that you currently even have, you, you, you can still have thin crust if you want. Okay. So even if you come to the restaurant and you say you don't want your pizza with a normal crust, you can still make for you at a, at, with a thin crust as well. Right. I'm yeah. trying to imagine, you know, how it's made. Maybe you can a little bit just paint for us a picture. How do you create a pizza from scratch until it's now final and presented to you on the table? Because they're always juicy and crunchy and pleasing uh -huh. to the eye. So, um, in Anza Naunga, so the flour, the flour, the, when you mix in the flour, you have to have the, have the right ingredients. Uh -huh. So there's more yeast, curry, um, salt, uh, uh, flour, oil, flour, and sugar, water. Uh, flour, sugar, flour, oil. sugar, oil, salt, and salt water, and, and water. yeast, of course. Uh -huh. Yes. So is it some kind of special flour? Am I just no, no, flour? the home baking flour. Oh, you too, unga chapati. Unga too, chapati too, but not to me. Uh huh. Yes. So, so take us through that process. So of course uh, you have to mix the dry ingredients first, um, uh -huh. so that at least you can incorporate um, all the dry ingredients. Then now you start adding the water slowly until you now you make it into a dough. Then mm. by the time once it's now formed into a dough, you now add the oil at, at the end. 
Right. So now when you add the oil, you make sure that you also needed the oil so that it's now one thing. You don't start seeing um, traces of oil in the flour because it has to mix well. It needs to bind well together. Right. So after that's done, you, of course, portion it into the size that you want. If you want thin crust, thick crust, depending on the weight that you want. Okay. Then, of course, now you also have to make the pizza sauce. Uh -huh. So the pizza sauce, of course, is main, it's mainly uh, toma it's mainly the base is the toma is tomatoes. Anyway. Uh -huh. So for us, we actually make our own pizza sauce. We don't uh, buy whatever is in the market. Uh -huh. So ours are freshly made. So you crush like real organic tomatoes, yes. peel them out, crush them. Then you them. of course mix whatever spices you want to mix. Of course uh -huh. with herbs. Then that oh, becomes there's herbs in yeah, there. Yeah, like oregano or um, thyme or whichever you want to put, because everyone has their own different flavors. Right. So of course we have our own special homemade recipe that we use. Okay. So of course which I can't disclose because that's that's our. Oh, it's <laughs> a secret. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but if you research on that, you can find different uh, various uh, pizza sauce recipes that you can you can use uh -huh. if you want to make it at home. Yeah. And of course you have to prepare the toppings. Whether you want chicken, you want beef, you want. Um, uh, what bacon? You whatever. said toppings. What are they? <laughs> toppings are what what goes into the pizza on the top. Either on the any, top. Any, oh. either, either the either meaty meat meaty layers. Part. Yes, or vegetables. Because uh -huh. other people are vegetarian, so they take vegetarian pizza. Oh, that's veg pizza and yes, vegetarian. This, uh, then of course pizza. is uh, the ultimate is the cheese. Right. So I love the cheese. So right. you have to make sure that you have good cheese. Uh huh. I think that's the secret. If you don't have good cheese done that actually stretches, right. I don't think that's a good pizza. And it's always crunchy and creamy. Yeah. So we. Like you're saying, we uh, like you had said about uh, technology. We right. we actually have a conveyor a conveyor oven. Uh -huh. So you put the pizza on one end in five minutes, and look at the other end coming already. Uh -huh. And like at in home, in five minutes. Yes, in five Done. minutes. Uh -huh. Once you've put up every, all the top, you've you've pressed the door, or you've rolled the door. If, if you're doing it at home, yeah. then you just put the the, the sauce, the toppings, then the cheese, and right. just put it on the oven. The oven has a conveyor belt, so it's like a to your Right. So it's now it's it's controlled, of course, and not mm. not like at home, but but that one is actually literally controlled. Yeah. So uh, you put it from one end, comes out the other, then slice it, and then serve it to the customers. Right. Yes. So it means you can also make like a couple of them. Yes, like you can. One. You can yes. do like five, six, seven plates. Yes, you can. The oven will just uh, will will take. So you because the entrance of the oven can either accommodate one or two uh, two or three pizzas. Right. So depending on so it, uh, by the time of Coco Musho, the shy was out in within five minutes. Right. Yes. Damn, I never knew that. You know, yes. most of us would just come and receive the final product, but we don't know there's a lot that goes in there. There is there is a lot that goes in there because uh, you need to ensure it's actually it's more it's more um, physical. So there's not uh, the last part of course is just the machine, but everything else you have to either use uh, a dough mixer or um, uh, the dough press to need to make sure that the dough is actually perfectly round. Because yeah. of course you you can imagine the volumes and you're and you're rolling dough by hand, right? Uh, it's not easy. <laughs> uh, but mo most of the ones I've seen with chefs making is they're doing it like hands on. Yes, they but you know, uh, but, but you are, you're like a commercial outfit, yes. so you have to have like a conveyor. Yeah, we have a conveyor plus also there's a there's something called a dough press uh -huh. that we actually use to press the dough. Right. So it now it just becomes a perfectly round circle. Right. Yes. All right. Uh, talk, talk to us a little bit about that business. How has it been and how is the reception in the market? I know Peter's, Peter has a special brand of mm -hmm. market, yes. you know, uh, or a, a brand of, of target audience. Mm -hmm. you know, you rarely will you see somebody from the interiors of Home Salaba or Moranga, the interiors like <laughs> Kujana Taka Peter, because they're used to their traditional foods. Uh, how is yeah. the market so far? Um, having been that uh, the, the Pizza Mojo brand was actually started, was actually open, it was launched in 2015 at the Ad Life branch. So we've seen an uptick in the market, and actually since we opened, our pizzas have actually been selling. Of course, the initial days people associate big square with ribs. So now yeah. when you're introducing to them pizza, they're like, "Hey, you guys also do pizzas? Right. Okay, let's try it." Uh -huh. And actually, we've we've, uh, we've people have come to love the, our pizzas as well. Right. And of course, uh, the dynamics between then and now is sort of different because okay. then many people like to, like, like to eat out. Right. So you'll find people going to the restaurant and all that. But I think after COVID, um, things sort of changed slightly yeah. because of course the hospitality industry took a hit. Yes. Yes, but uh, at least now things are coming back up. At least we've seen almost um, uh, back to pre-COVID sales. So yeah. that, that means that peop the, the people are now not staying indoors as much as they did because yeah. we are social beings. So of course yeah. we have to eat out as well. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, um, in terms of numbers, we're still not back in terms of uh, the full numbers pre-COVID. Yeah. But of course, it's, it keeps growing day by day. Right. Yeah. In terms of customer, before we talk about customer service experience, who are some of the frequent customers that come? Like you can judge, you can tell this one is comes from this and this kind of a social status in, so, in um, society. 
our branches, we have 12 outlets in, uh, all across Kenya. Uh -huh. So the clientele varies. So mm -hmm. you'll find in Mombasa is, is a different clientele from the one in Eldoret. Right. I know Eldoret being a place that is mostly uh, frequented by farmers. Yeah. Then that's the market that is there. But of course, it's there. Uh, they consume a lot of pizza. Actually, yeah. they do. It's uh, in Eldoret being that it was actually we actually set up um, the branch in Eldoret during COVID. Mm. We actually saw a, a very good uptake as, as as compared to what we actually thought. As compared to Nairobi. No, as, as in terms of the market itself. Oh, okay. You know, the, you know, Eldoret is uh, is a place that is mainly uh, farmers. Yeah, because it's a, a place resilient that, place. That yeah, exactly. So when we saw that yeah. actually pizza did well, we were actually surprised. All right. And even the revenue that you actually anticipated. Yeah. did better than actually what we, what we thought. What so thought, yeah. it was actually a good thing. But of course, in Nairobi, it's, it's different. Of course, CBD branches, we yeah. have two. So the one, of course, on, on my avenue is mostly frequented by students. Right. Because it's, that's the that's clientele that is on that side. Yeah. And of course, the one that is at 680 is, is the branch that is now frequented by guys who are at City Hall or bi uh, the office blocks. Right. Yeah, so guys who want to have meetings. So 680 is more of a meeting place. Right. And then Moy Avenue is more of a party place. Right. So that's why there are different um, clientele in those two, in those two well. branches. Uh -huh. But of course, um, mo being that some of our branches are, are, are in malls, we also, uh -huh. also have the play areas. Right. So it's more or less, the, the background of Big Sway is more or less um, a family-oriented restaurant. Okay. So that's what we focus on, uh, pushing, uh, pushing meals. So, you know, kids are very, are very uh, we've actually come to realize that kids have, have a very good um, influence on parents. Yeah. If a kid says, I want to go to Big Square, that's exactly where you're going to go. Right. So is it like a brand associated with some certain people? No, so uh, Big Square is pretty much, um, it's, it's a Kenyan brand. It's not a franchise or anything. Mm. It was actually founded in Kenya. All right. Of it's course, but yeah, it's a Kenyan business. But of course, uh, uh, the, own, the, the, the owners are not uh, Kenyan. But uh, it's actually, everything is uh, Kenyan. Right. So the only thing, so the only things that we import are, thi are only the equipment. Right. Of which, because we don't manufacture anything, so of course you have to import our equipment. All right. So, but in terms of um, all, our pro all our produce from our potatoes to our tomatoes to our chicken to everything else that we use, yeah. they're all local suppliers. All right. Before you tell me about food safety and customer service, mm -hmm. <laughs> why did you not guys settle in places like Bungoma or... Uh, the interiors of Kakameg. <laughs> no, Does it also vary with like you look at the market and you see, hey, up on Ikeka, so you only can't tap at a client. Uh, okay, you know, um, before uh, before you set up in a place, you need to understand your market. Uh -huh. And also, do you have the money to do it? Yeah. And you see, especially after COVID, um, things are a bit sl slightly slowed down. Yeah. And you need to also offset, uh, you need to also make sure that all your, your staff, first of all, are catered for, your current suppliers are catered for, and everything else is still in place. And you see, since we rely on money that actually comes in and not external investments, yeah. that's what we, we, we focus on. So for you to open a new outlet, to open a big square will probably cost you about 40 million. Mm, that's, that's a big amount of cash. Exactly. So you see, you can't just, um, you need to look for somewhere to get it. Mm. So we have to ensure that everything else currently is, is in place. So you have to yeah. set up, you have to make sure that your standard operating procedures are good the team that you actually have are very supportive people yeah. that at least by the time you're getting to open a new outlets, then you have the you have the capacity and that's why you've only expanded to two markets yeah. outside Nairobi. So that's Eldoret and only Mombasa. Right. So of course that's where we're currently at. Yeah. We have of course a vision of going to Kisumu, to Nakuru, to um, wh where else? Uh, uh, I think those are mainly the main areas. So that's yeah. uh, mainly it's mo mostly that. We're looking at is mainly Nakuru and Kisumu that we're looking at as for well now. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually we'll get into those places. Yeah. So yes. meaning anyone can consume pizza. See. Yes, anyone can. But on a samanga si chakula maboys, maboys was kula pizza. Ah, uh, of course, some some unaza sema iba lakini sometimes you don't feel like eating home home cooked food. Yeah. Amo just kikupika. You just want yeah. something to take out. It can be a snack. There was a time I ate pizza in twenty. I, I think the last time I ate pizza seriously was in twenty twenty one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like a snack, a chai, a subui. Because it was a chicken flavored one. It was so crunchy and cheesy. Yeah, uh, uh, most of us who eat pizza in the kitchen, what do you do? I'm cutting my sahaya a subui. Yeah, so it can be used as a good yeah, snack. Yeah, you can. And, and, and it was very thick, nilipenda sana. You the chicken flavor. See, I don't know what I'm for breakfast. So pizza yeah. plain snacks. So. Luya Nation. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, uh, how do you guys handle this uh, food safety, food safety measures? Because hygiene really matters. You know, there's yes, places you can walk in mm -hmm. and you see the person serving you and you're like, oh my God, I've already paid for it. I can't run away, mm -hmm. you know? 
There's places you've been, you go through and you're like, no, eh, we'll let you a car and your food is kai safi. So how do you guys maintain that hygiene in terms of food safety, hygiene, and handling it, handling it over to your clients? So we actually have someone internal who's, 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 the, who's spearheads food and health and safety in our, in our organization. Yeah. So we've set up procedures in terms of receiving, in terms of production, and all those things. So yeah. of course, uh, with food, you have to be very careful. Yeah. So in terms of um, the cooking temperatures and the cooling temperatures. Oh, cooking. Cooling. cooling t uh, cooking temperatures and cooling, and cooling temperatures. temperatures. So uh -huh. there's, a cert there's a certain danger zone that food, the temperatures, if, for example, food is safe above 65, between 65 and above degrees, it's safe. Uh -huh. But, and then... 65, it's that's high temperature. Yeah, so that's high temperature. But now uh -huh. when it's cool, when it's, uh, the, when it's supposed to be cold, it uh -huh. should be at least five degrees and below. All right. So the danger zone, of course, now becomes anything in between this, um, between, of course, uh, above five and uh -huh. below 65. That, that range is, is, is called the danger zone. Uh, it applies to both solid foods and liquids? Uh, yes. Okay. So it also depends, but also depends in terms of whether the, the product actually has preservatives, of which All we right. don't. Uh, so there's nothing about products that we actually add preservatives to. Yeah. But there's products that deserve to have preservatives? Yes, but you see, our products are fresh products. So uh, things like ribs, chicken, that's yeah. you, you, it has a certain period that you can't sell it uh, after that. Yeah. So of course... Um, we can preservatives, of course, it's like extending the shelf life. We right. don't want to do that because yeah. our policy is made fresh when you order. Yeah. So when you see, when you come to a restaurant, you yes. won't get something in three minutes, food in three minutes. Mm. You have to, you have to wait, to wait at wait least 15 minutes. 15 uh, 15 actually, minutes our prep time is 15 minutes. Uh -huh. So you have to just make sure that everything that we prepare is actually fresh. So in terms of, um, even our pizzas, if you go to the restaurant, you'll find that our, uh, our staff handle pizzas with gloves. With gloves, right? With gloves. So of yeah. course, you first of all, wash your hands sanitize your hands, and then also now you'll have to wear gloves. Yeah. So that's pretty much the safety procedure that we also have to take right. um, to ensure that everything, that the food that you're being given is actually safe. Yeah. Yeah, and also the storage temperatures in terms of the chillers, you have to make sure they're serviced yeah. to ensure that the temperature never goes, be, uh, never goes above uh, five degrees. Right. Yes. So uh, in short, uh, you, you can't meet ready-made food like when I gave and I say, oh, I want pizza, blah, 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 and it pops, it pops up. No, pizza you actually, can't you, can't make, you can't make pizza because after 10 minutes, it's gone. Yeah. Because it's now, the cheese now solidifies yeah, and the crust becomes hard, away. so it, you can't. You oh, can't really become, use it. Yeah. yeah, but for things like ribs, where you order and the like grill, then you'll get to be at least 10 to 15 minutes to put a food. Yako. Do most businesses actually pay attention to, especially food outlets, do they pay attention to such you know, measures? Um, because I can only imagine uh, at a place like Kiba, at a Kiban Rasky, of course, you don't expect you know, high levels of hygiene. Mm. But yeah, for, from the standard of yours, at least you have to adhere to that because you also the kind of clients that walk in. Yes. Like I mentioned to you, you can walk to a place and judging by just the first appearance, you have already turned off. Of course. So uh -huh. I think for, for us, we have audits. Uh -huh. So every month we have, um, every bunch has to be done for an audit. Uh -huh. And the pass mark is 85%. Uh -huh. So you have to make sure that the hygiene standards, the service standards, the products that are being received are actually the right temperature. So even, even when a delivery truck comes, which is refrigerated, yeah. you have to make sure that the temperature is actually within the safe zone. Okay. So, of course, in Akibanda, you wouldn't get that. Because you, okay, now Akibanda, you a fridge. You a pizza mui too. Ah, you pizza mui too. Then. Mona is course. Ah, it's then you can Because you see, cheese I'm a homemade pizza. Homemade, homemade pizza, pizza you can yeah. make. Yeah. But you see, homemade pizza, you'll make it how you love it. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, because for us, we make everything with love. That's actually our tagline, made with love. Made with love, okay. Yes. Okay, okay. So, Kibanda, uh -huh. uh, and even where you're eating, you can eat your pizza for Karibu. Yeah. So, and the but food for us, slaps still. <laughs> yeah, and see, that's the thing. Sometimes the you will slaps, have yeah. a, a moment where you just want to go to and, and have that experience in terms of just something that is. Especially when you eat a slab, you eat a slab. Still today, you eat a slab. Not like, smoking. But you eat a slab. By the way. Yeah. 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 Things have transitioned. So, yeah. but people are becoming very um, health conscious. Yes. And also, uh, you just have to make sure that the food that you're actually giving to the customer is very, is very safe. Yeah. So even from the vegetables, you have to make sure that the vegetables being used yep. are very clean because there's a certain procedure that we take our team through yeah. how to clean your vegetables 
how they're supposed to be sanitized and all yeah. those things. Right. Yeah. Uh, is there maybe a reason, uh, for example, <clears throat> let me paint it to you like this. For any business to start off, um, mm -hmm. you must look for a target audience, you must look for starting capital, um, you must look for sometimes backup support system. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe what are some of the factors that made you guys start this business? Was it, and why pizza? Like specifically pizza as a product? Um, I think there was a niche of good pizza. Uh -huh. I think you feel like there was a gap on the market. Yes, there was a gap. There was a gap in the market. Okay. Because you can't start a business to start a brand without knowing that there's, there's actually a gap in the market. For any right. business to start, there's a gap. Right. True. So even when the delivery partners come into place, there's a gap. Yeah. So specifically for us, we felt that we needed to give um, customers good pizza. Yeah. Because pizza mojo, what is mojo? Getting your groove back. Right. So the pizza mojo. mojo means get your mojo. Get back. your pizza back. Right. Oh, so wow, that's okay. pretty much um, what we what we stand for. So you get um, if you, the, especially the barbecue chicken pizza that we serve, uh -huh. kids love it. It's mm. actually our best selling pizzas mm. because it's made fresh. The base is fresh. The dough is fresh. Right. The cheese is the best cheese that you can actually have. So the suppliers that we actually use for cheese yeah. are cheese that you'll actually enjoy because you know, kuna cheese in and yeah. it's a bit, you, when you smell it, it smells like milk. Yeah. So, and cheese not supposed to smell I'm a homemade cheese. Yeah, but then <laughs> but you see, there's certain uh, parameters that just like wine, right. there's certain parameters that you need to achieve to get good wine. Yeah. So the same as cheese, there's certain parameters that you need to do to, yeah. to achieve good cheese. Yeah, actually, you can tell a difference when you eat some of products that have cheese. Yes. you know, you can tell a difference. This one smells butterish. This one tastes, you know, sugarish, mm -hmm. and and whatnot, milkish. You know? Yeah, and hence why you go to the supermarket, you'll find. A whole range of suppliers who supply cheese right and if you look at the price points you'll find uh -huh. that they're not the same right because there's one there's one or two people who make very good cheese right. and that's what you must rely on right yes and you see for us supporting local uh, local farmers is what we what we what we aim yeah so the suppliers that we use are actually all all uh, local suppliers yeah From the vegetable suppliers to the meat suppliers to um everyone else because those are the main people that we use okay uh, so that's everything everyone else that we use around us is all local right so back to um pizza we felt that there was a gap that okay. we need to give customers good pizza mm. so of course you need to have the right location but right. even before you even get the right location you need to do market research yes do market well, is research. it important by the way to do yes. market research? because you see i think many people are many people currently are opening restaurants because yeah. they, they feel it will make them money and clubs, yeah, you've and seen clubs. a lot of them in but residential but areas. What, well. what happens to clubs usually after two years? Yeah, a new club, something new has, has come up, up again. So yeah. this one is forgotten. They go the to attention a new one. goes to the other one. Exactly. So, uh -huh. but you have to keep, you have to make sure what what exactly are you giving customers? Right. So for us, we're in the food industry, so we must give you good yeah. food. Right. So by doing market research, you get to understand what do customers really want. Exactly. So do they what what sort of product do they want? Uh -huh. What are the challenges they experience when you go to the restaurants? Because uh -huh. initially we were more of a fast food uh, restaurant, but now we are more of a casual dining. Uh -huh. Because a customer wants to get to the restaurant, be seated down, um, be offered a glass of water. I mean, a bottle uh -huh. of water. Then you you're able to enjoy the full experience of service. Well, so just the ambience should yeah, be welcoming. Yeah, the ambience as well. So the music, yeah. the how the, the the deco of the restaurant also has to matter. The lighting, yeah. the uh, the pictures, whatever is in the restaurant, just has to make you feel as if you're at home. Yeah. So those are things that people need to really consider because right. you can have a very good uh, ambience but very very crappy food. Yeah, and also sometimes bad 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 service. Yes. <laughs> And S since it's customer service week, maybe you can also chime in on that. Uh, mm -hmm. How you guys are delivering excellent service to your clients and maintaining that client base or that fan base? Because I also interviewed someone here who said most of our clients are repeat customers who yes. actually refer other customers. So it's a chain of customers coming in and going out and speaking a word to the outside. Exactly. Uh -huh. How so, do you guys maintain that? Uh, so of course, um, for us, we really invested in training. Okay. So we actually have a training team that actually trains our staff. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we always, whenever I go to the branches, whenever um, everyone else who's part of the management team goes to the branches, these are things that you actually look, look at for. How mm -hmm. the customer is welcomed, how the customer is um, served, how, how long does it take for, you, for the order to, to come out. So of course if you realize that there's gaps, you yeah. have to make sure that you address it and get yeah. to understand why is there that gap. So is it right. a training need? Is it um, the fact that there was a lapse in the kitchen or something? So you must really get to understand what exactly the issue is. 
Aye. And by having our team, especially the managers on the floor, the supervisors on the floor, right. we get to understand what the customers really want because we have a feedback form on, our, on, our, on, on all our tables. All so right. just scan the QR code and give your feedback in terms of how was your general experience, right. the, how, was, how were, you well, were you welcomed, how was the food, did the manager yeah. visit your table? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's enabling us to know exactly where the gaps are. And since mm -hmm. it's customer service week, we need to ensure that our customers are happy because yeah. you want to go to a place and leave, you want to go to a place happy and leave happy. And sometimes yeah. you'll get you'll get customers who maybe are not are not maybe they're having a bad day. So it's yeah. up to you to actually make that customer feel happy. And we've actually had those scenarios. Ah, a star, like you a, can make someone who's I'm talking a mambo zak. But when they get there, <laughs> their day gets turned around. The day actually just turns out yes, to be amazing. It happens because wow. it's the interaction. Of, you know, like sm small things. We've had um, um, parents who come with kids, yeah. and then the kids are running around, and you'll find the waiter probably is going to take the kid and hold them, right. and then the, 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 the parent gets a time to eat. Those yeah. small uh, gestures make the make people very happy about it because True. you're going the extra mile. You're not. You yeah. know, it, there's no way it's written in your job description right. that you need to hold uh, um, hold the customer's kid. Right. But because you're having that, and you see, you, you can only do that during slow days, because yeah. of course, when it's a busy day, you can't ignore the customers as well. True, so yeah. simple acts of uh, service, simple uh, simple gestures, make customers really happy just by saying thank you. How yeah. was your day? How is everything going? You see, yeah. some of those things. They actually mean a lot. They mean know? a lot. They yeah. may be very tiny things, but they yeah. actually mean a lot. Yeah. Because if you're asked by a stranger, um, yeah. how was your, your day? day? Yeah. It's, it's something that, first of all, you'll get shocked about and be like, yeah. eh, okay. But you can ask someone, how was your day? And they'll be like, so you want to know my day? Can you handle it? <laughs> exactly. So you see, that's, that's also an opportunity <laughs> for you to transform this person's day. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because you've given the time, you've given the attention. Right. Because the simple acts of service, by telling a customer... I yeah. like your dress, I like your suit, I like yeah. certain things are, are very, they seem very s small, but yeah. they're actually very big in the customer's eyes. Right. So those simple things of act of service is what we really focus on because we want to give customers an experience, not just right. um, come to Big Square, eat ribs and walk out. Yeah. We want you to enjoy the full experience from our, from, uh, from our drinks to our milk, so especially um, our milkshakes, our yeah. um, homemade sangria that we actually do, many people would, may not understand what that is, but it's just yeah. mainly a blend of... Sounds like oh, Indianish. <laughs> no, it's, mo it's just a blend of uh, wine and, um, vi and uh, what is it called, and brandy with okay. fruits. So it's like, it's, like a pr it's like a punch. All right. Yes. So we actually want to have one of the best sangrias in town. All right. Yes. Wow. I can't wait to find out what that is. And m maybe still on that note, do you feel like maybe there's, um, there's a code of conduct mm -hmm. for every person in the service industry to stick to? and adhere to in terms of uh, maintaining their client base and uh, a good relationship? Yes, I think there is. It, I, I don't think whether, I don't know whether it's written or not, but it's mm -hmm. something that um, if uh, you're in the hospitality industry, what is your aim? What is the end goal? The end yeah. goal is to ensure the customer is happy because right. you need to make sure that when the customer walks in, because you're representing, one, you're representing the brand that you're working for. In this case, for us, it's Big Square. But you're also representing a personal brand. Yeah. You are me, for example, as Kelvin. I'm I'm a brand by myself. Yeah. And you see, it doesn't mean that you being there, you're just um, coming to work and then go home. Yeah. You have to make sure that by the time you're leaving, you've actually have have, have had an impact yeah. on either yourself or even on the customer. Right. So it's 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 maybe an unwritten rule, but yeah. in every even if it's an airline, if yeah. you go work for an airline or if you go into um, into a plane, yeah. from the minute the person who's checking you in yes. comes in. What do, what do you want to feel? You want to feel welcomed. Yeah, you true. want to feel that you actually matter. You want to feel special because you have to treat each and every customer, no matter yeah. how they're dressed, no matter how they look, you must treat, you must treat them the exact same way because yeah. it's a hospitality industry. Right. So it's just mainly like an enriching rule. You just yeah. have to make sure that the customer comes, uh, leaves that restaurant better than they came in. Yeah. Yes. In your line of duty, have you ever met someone who's combative and just aggressive? Of yes, course. everybody has issues, but you know, this person is trying to project, they complain a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always just one person in that crowd who says something off, you know, trying to like just create a mountain out of a molehill that was not there. How did you handle such a scenario? I think you just have to sometimes just step down to that person's level. As much as it's it's not it's not the right it's it's not the right thing to do because in terms of business yeah. you're affecting yourself. So right. for example, you, you, you'll serve a customer, um, I, by, by the way, I didn't order for this. And you're like, uh, ah. okay, but you've just finished the plate. Uh, like, There's ever been such an experience? Yeah, like somebody has finished eating mm -hmm. everything, I'm as mash, it's so clear, like, plate like even is for pizzas, done. You'll get someone who's maybe ordered for a large, yeah. who's ordered for a medium, 
and then uh -huh. in, the, in the middle of that akasema no I wanted a large but okay. by the time when we let large and asama by the wanted a medium but asha maliza. Asha maliza. so okay. you have to try and, and understand that customer but some, uh, sometimes you have to look at the cost benefit analysis yeah. do you want to cause a scene you have a hundred other customers around you yeah would, you, would the customer rather pay for the medium yeah. yes you ate a large but you just um get that loss and just move on because right. at the end of the day you don't want to um um uh, create such such havoc in your head because see that's gonna be almost like bad publi publicity. Yeah. So you have to be very careful. In so you're protecting your brand at the same time. Yes, you have to protect your brand. Wow. Yes. At the end I mean, of the day, you have to protect your brand. <laughs> For me, that's the time I call security and Chonga Viazi comes in. <laughs> ah, no, but has there been such incidences, yeah. by the way? Uh, yeah, there, are, there has, there has been. Yeah. Chonga Viazi because at this point, because now it's. Uh, I don't think I'd as at Mkasa uh, kulipa bill then kwambie attend uka chonge viazi doesn't it doesn't What do you do? Take them no, to jail? No, you just have to uh, you just have to let the security handle it. All right. Because now it's if but the of security will have to go through police or yes, something. Yes, of course. You know? So that's now we hand, because we have in some of our outlets we have security guards so of course we leave it to them for them, for them to follow it up for, for us. Right. Yes. Right. In any in every business actually, there's there's usually competition. There's mm -hmm. your biggest competitors. There's those you look up to. There's mm -hmm. those you're like, damn, I wish I, I was doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then there's those that you know, they they're like they never go out of business. They're always there. Mm -hmm. You know, have you met such in your in your industry as well? Yes. That you say, hey, I wanna. They give us a run for our money very fast. Of course, we have uh, various competitors who are um, in this industry, the major okay. players who've been there even longer than us. Right. Others who've been there for 20 years, others who've been there for 30 years. Yeah. So, of course, we have, of course, taken away part of their customers, which is natural. Yeah. But also at the same time, we've gotten to a point that, yes, as much as they're bigger than me, but they mm. still give me a run for their money. Yeah. So, you just have to make sure that the experience that the customer gets when they get into the, into the restaurant is good because that's what's going to make that customer come yeah. back mm. because if i come into a restaurant yes pay for food yes i've gotten that sale for that particular day but if i had a, if i have a bad experience chances of me coming back may be very slim and yeah. trying to get me back there is going to take a lot of effort yeah. so you just have to make sure that yes of course you're going to have bad days we will have yeah. complaints you'll have those things which is inevitable in any industry even in your own industry there's no single there's no single month that you'll just go that everything was just smooth yeah you'll of course have hiccups here and there but right. it just it just depends on how you handle it because you see you have to try and recover that customer but if you ignore it then you've uh, not you've not done yourself justice right you just have to make sure that yes this customer had a bad experience uh -huh. how do you make it up to them right yes fantastic and it's yeah. not even only about just giving complimentaries yeah. but also just oh, complimentaries but they are part of it <laughs> yeah so it's not about just giving complimentaries yeah so sometimes if someone has had a bad experience yeah. even by just coming to acknowledge that you made a mistake and yeah. actually and just saying I'm sorry. Yeah. Goes a long way. Is it possible to have such enough in a fast in a fast lane business? Because mm -hmm. most of these restaurants will never apologize. Uh, I don't want to bring out that scenario. Anyways, there's somebody who bought an iPhone at this big iPhone company. They're being they're being sold to second hand. Mm -hmm. You know, iPhones. Okay. And then only later on for these guys to do research and realize, hey, you guys have been playing us all this time. You're mm -hmm. selling us second hand phones mm -hmm. that should be you know, sold at a, like two times lower the price of mm -hmm. the original brand new. So, you know, c customers doing such research and finding out crazy things about the business yeah. owner, it can really put you at stake. It really can. Mm. And that's why uh, some people can, may not uh, be able to apologize, but I think we have we take up um, the role of just trying to recover that customer right. just by saying sorry, even just by apologizing, even just mm. by saying, yeah, well, let's look into it. At mm. least you've said you're going to do something about it. Yeah. Because you see, sometimes you, it may not really be your fault, but the, fa the fact that you say you're going to look into it and do an investigation goes yeah. a long way. Yeah. Just by the fact of you're going to look into it, acknowledging it, uh -huh. and saying you're going to look into it is a different uh -huh. conversation altegether. Right. Absolutely. Because other than someone has uh, DM'd you and they've had a complaint and then you just ignore it, yeah. just by acknowledging and just saying, let's look into it and then we'll get back to you. Right. Yeah. Also, delivery really matters, and this means uh, I, I, I understand your clients. Sometimes they can make a call, and yes. they say, "Hey, I can't come to your, you know, location, but is there a way I can have this piece and this and this and that delivered to me?" Yes, how can. do you guys use that, and also how do you guys incorporate technology? Because I understand, <laughs> I understand nowadays, you know, there's a lot that happens in the auto social media as well. Mm -hmm. Now that you know, there's digital platforms, there's huge presence on Instagram, X, and many other social media platforms. Are you guys making use of that, and how's it been? 
So of course uh, we have delivery partners. Of course, um, just like um, the rides, you can order a, a bolt, you can order whatever. So even for us, we use the delivery platforms like Jumia, Glovo, Bolt, Uber, just to make sure that we reach an uh, we reach the other audience because uh, the, the po you don't want to, not every single time would you want to drive from your house to um, to the restaurant, but you just want it to be delivered to your doorstep. Yeah. So that that is possible and it does happen. Yeah, yeah, because that for us we're not in, we're, we're in the business of doing food, not um, uh, not um, uh, logistics. So we give um, this uh, delivery partners the opportunity for them to be able to do to do that. Right. Yes, to deliver our food to them. Right. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to get uh, the question of the day first, but uh, we'll get there first. Uh, in terms of social media presence, are you guys mm -hmm. making use of digital platforms like X? Uh, we're mostly active on. Uh, we're trying to now uh, upgrade our TikTok account because yeah. that's why that's now the new thing. But yeah. uh, we're uh, actually be very in, uh, involved in Instagram and uh, Facebook right. usually. Yeah. All right. Uh, we had we had an interesting question that we also posted on our social media, and I'll get to your feedback in just a bit. But we had asked our viewer in, in your first business idea, when mm -hmm. as a advice gani come to when you antaka ko start a business, especially the first initial stages. I know there's 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 a way you can uh, you can have an idea, write it down, and even change it to another idea, mm -hmm. or polish it up, or even do away with it permanently, mm -hmm. and then have another alternative. Mm -hmm. So for you, ni uh, advice gani when as a piano? come to Antaka to start a business, any business in the world? Um, I think, uh, first of all, you need to do your research uh -huh. and also think through about it and just create, it may not be the best of business plans, but just yeah. have an idea about it. Right. So do research in terms of your competitors and also do an assort analysis. Right. So assort analysis, uh, it's just mainly just check the strength, the weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats. Yeah. That give you, an, in a nutshell, exactly what you need to do in terms depending on the industry that you want to go to right. because if you don't do a sort of analysis then you won't really understand the market that you're going into depending on whichever might be it hospitality be it logistics yeah. be it anything you just right. have to make sure that you do a sort of analysis to understand the market that you're first of all getting into right and of course uh, my other advice would be do something that you're passionate about yeah i think there's this saying i don't know that I'll, I'll get it correct but do something that you can do it with passion that right. you can go a, d a day without getting paid for it Mm. Because you love it that Doing much. It, yeah. So you don't mind if it doesn't give you money or not. Yes, you just love it. So you see, eventually, because uh, you love it so much, what's going to happen in the end? Yeah. You get money, you get returns from it. Absolutely. Because you're doing it with love, you're doing it with passion. Yeah. So just don't start a business that you, that you first of all don't have an idea about yeah. or a business that you're not passionate about. Because if you're not passionate about something, yeah. chances of you doing it to the best of your ability are very low. Yeah. Yeah, because you just say, ah, nilijiu wa tunta fail. Yeah. Is, is and it's already right? a mindset. It's already a mindset. <laughs> so there's right. no point of that happening while you can actually just make sure that yeah. you do what you love. And if you're passionate about something, you can every, I, I think you can turn any idea into a business idea. It just any depends, idea into a business idea. Yeah, it just, it just depends on how you execute it. Right. And also have mentors around you. Yeah. Ask questions, get to understand what, what that industry is all about. Because Consult. if you don't, at least so. if you do all that research, because if, if you come to a restaurant and even just ask a waiter, um, mm. wh 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 how is this industry? You'll get that's already market research just for free. Yeah. Because you'll, you'll be asking them how is, how is this industry, how are customers, how is everything. Because some waiters will not really ignore you. Yeah. Because they'll have that time to discuss with you and all that. Right. So even have friends, if you have friends who are in the same industry, yeah. ask them those questions. What and are the that challenges? that is networking, by the yeah. way. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's networking. all networking. Yeah. And then also just attend uh, some, uh, some, some of these um, events. If here there's a, there's a, like, a, a, I think there's an expo, I think, at Sarit or something. Yeah. Attend those things. It will help you yeah. broaden your, your, your mindset. And also meet like-minded people. Yes. Right. All right, let me just sample part of your feedback before you finalize. Uh, there's Edgar, Han <laughs> Edgar Hansa, Mwanya Hururu, Sasa, Mwanya Hururu tuned in. Uh, Melon Musk, I see what you did with that name. Melon Musk, and I say my giggle, Eco Locked. Uh, Prince Paul Miendo, David Bungoma County, shout out to you. Uh, Catherine Shiko Anasema Sana from Kanganda in Muranga. Eric Jackson Anasema trying to get the real profit of the business, but the profit starts a better accumulation after three months. But the, is it possible for uh, someone to start a business like Umanza this month and you're making profit the following months? No, no I don't, I don't not a chance. Why not? Because, first of all, in the, in the initial stages, you're trying to get your balance in the market. Uh -huh. And Paul, first of all, don't, know, don't really know about you. All right. So you have to get your name out there. So before you start getting the influx of customers from uh, different places, then of yeah. course it takes time. You can't 
uh, build a customer base just uh, within the first one month. It takes time for you to build because you have to get that repeat business for them yeah. to, for you to now be sustainable. All right. Yes. Or maybe it's a business that's, uh, for example, which, which uh, I think in one of the morning stories we read, there's one that has been resilient is Uchumi. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's the one that converted to another hypermarket or supermarket. It's, it's possible. Oh. But anyways, we'll get to that. Yeah. No worries about that. <laughs> and I told Wycliffe Mugambi and I said, capital, you find many people have business ideas, but capital only challenge. Right? right? Yes, true that. Uh -huh. I think that's, um, even for me, as, a, as, a, as young as I am, yeah. you don't always want to start your own business, but where is the capital? Right. So you just, I think um, for guys maybe who have the money, but don't have the idea, then you yeah. can match those two. Right. Because the people who have the money who want to invest, but they don't know where to invest in because maybe they want to start a restaurant, yeah. but they don't know someone. They don't know. They don't have someone who knows how to manage the restaurant because to find someone who actually understands the industry is willing to help you, yeah. and is the one thing that I think we get a challenge with is yeah. integrity. Yeah. To find someone who will actually be genuine, genuinely honest, honest and authentic. Authentic. You know? it's, it's. I think it's. It's quite hard, and I think that's. For me, every day that I speak to um, even my, my, my juniors and even, even the guys, my colleagues as well, yeah. there are three things that I work with. Loyalty, right. uh -huh. honesty, and integrity. Loyalty, honesty, integrity. Because, Core values. Yeah, uh -huh. because, but for me, the integrity stands out the most. Yeah. Because even in Gava. <laughs> yeah. For me, I'm right. just saying for me as an individual. Why? Why does it matter to you? For me, it much? matters because here at the end of the day, like I said earlier, you're a personal brand. Yeah. There's no, because you see, you'll meet someone, for example, who knows Kelvin. Akulize, how is Kelvin? Yeah. What do they say about Kelvin? Well, the story they say about you. Exactly. The so PR. The PR there. about Kelvin matters right. a lot. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I would say, I say, by the Kevo, I would trust Kevo. Mm. But if you can get to a point that actually, hey, by the Kevo is someone that you can actually rely on. Yeah. That's now a good thing. Right, too. I agree with you. So I think in all, in, in, like I said, your own brand, the yeah. Kelvin brand or yeah. the Sakwa brand, yeah. that's something that you always have to live by. That's because you remember, as much as you may not know it, but people are watching you. People are watching mm. what you do. People are watching how you act. And sometimes you may not know it yeah. or see it or feel it, but they are. But they're actually watching you. Yeah. So even when you do something, this yeah. person's going to... Uh, they're watchful. Like, yeah, they're like, oh, someone did that, let me try it. Yeah. So you see, if you do something wrong, yeah. and you're also misleading someone else behind you. All right. Because they may be older than you, or they may be younger than you, but they look up to you. Yeah. Because you can be a mentor in your own right. Exactly. Yeah, whether whether um, it's a young person or an yeah. older person, yeah. you're a mentor in your own right. Right. So you have to make sure that you watch what you do and the steps that you actually leave behind because someone else wants to walk into those steps. Yeah. Because someone wants to, as uh, wants someone aspires to be where you are. Yeah. So if you leave the wrong steps, then you're actually misleading someone else. Absolutely. And that person is misleading someone else. else. And the chain goes on. And the on. chain goes on. All right, we, we have to go. We okay, have to go, fine. Kelvin. We are out of time. I don't know how time has flown yeah, I don't. that <laughs> very fast. I mean, it's because we are talking too much. But yeah, we have to go for anyone who wants to access you, find you on social media, or maybe give you a call, and maybe also get to check out uh, your uh, products. Mm -hmm. How can they reach you? This is your camera. Um, so if, uh, so for, for me personally, it's um, the Instagram page is Kelvin underscore Gitonga underscore Muverevi. But if, uh, for Big Square, you can just reach uh, uh, on all platforms at Big Square KE. All right. Yes. And that's that. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, talking to us about that. I had like so many questions, but time in Mekata. We have been speaking to Kelvin Gitonga. He's operations manager at Beck Square. Karibu sana and thank you so much. Hopefully, you met to let us something. Eh, no, I'll let you. So, this is your but it's all right. <laughs> but thank you so much. Here's what we call it a day. Many thanks for watching. My good name is Sakwa at Y244 channel on all social media platforms, including threads. I've not yet understood how to use it, but you can tell me. Mine's is a Brian Circle 101. Have a fantastic Tuesday. We'll see you next time right here on Why in the Morning.